Sex and Sorcery, Magic and Mystery, William Funko. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited because we're at Rock City Nottingham right now. Obviously for a midweek vampire party courtesy of Creeper. Uh, the Sacred Blasphemy Tour is well underway and to talk to me all about it. It is the incredible front man, Mr. William Von Gold. Hello, how's it going everybody? She'll drain the blood and drag you from the light. So you're a spooky duke like me. How was your Halloween? Oh, we went to, um, we went, we were DJed at the Hard Rock Cafe in Newcastle. Nice. Uh, so it was really, really fun. Um, we got really drunk. Uh, we all dressed up obviously as vampires, it made sense to. <laughs> Everything was covered in blood. Uh, and loads of Creeper fans were there dressed in amazing vampire makeup. Mm. So uh, I love the Havoc Cafe anyway at the best of times. Yeah. Uh, but it was great, we had loads of fun. I got too drunk though and had to go home. <laughs> <laughs> vampires. Yeah. This is the theme of the new Creeper era. But obviously, you tweeted yesterday everything's covered in blood. <laughs> It is. It's going well then. Yes, it's going very well. It, it, everything's a bit crusty now, you know. Um, it's uh, the, we, the wardrobe case is covered in blood, and these shirts we have to dry them off every day. They're still wet from the show before, mm -hmm. um, and the venues are covered in blood too. It's, it gets a lot of places blood, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. Yeah. So obviously, you know, Sacred Blasphemy tour. You're on your third night tonight, so it's really exciting. And I just want to ask you because obviously I've been seeing all the footage on social media, and you already mentioned that your fans, you obviously in Halloween night. Came out dressed up they really take creeper and the new eras seriously like they're dressed up to the nines like they've got the teeth and they've got the the costume like you said the blood so what is it like for you you know going out so far every night and seeing the fans really embracing this new creeper era and going with the vampire theme with you oh it's amazing uh, it's always been very they've always been very super supportive but this time around it's been uh, really apparent each day every day is like kind of like a halloween show for us anyway but this time around, it's even more so. It's heightened more than it ever has been before. Yeah. Some, some incredible looks as well. Some incredible makeup, some yeah. incredible outfits. Um, so yeah, it's just amazing. It's amazing to have something that you're doing have, have a reaction and to see the reaction on people's attire and what they're wearing too. Yeah. Uh, but it always feels like a big family creeper now. We kind of go through the seasons a little bit. Yeah. Sometimes you'll see like um, Callous Hire Patches in the crowd from that first record, and you, sometimes you see people in very androgynous kind of row makeup from the record before. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and lots and lots of vampires now as well. It's yeah. a real eclectic mix we have. Yeah. <laughs> I have to ask you, I mean, I love it. And of course, they're cool as fuck, but why vampires for you? Like, what was it about vampires for the new Sanguivore era? Well, I think we were trying to. Um, uh, make a darker record in general after our last one. Mm -hmm. And I had the idea of the vampire concert a long time ago. Ian Miles, uh, our guitar player, had gone through an awful lot in lockdown with uh, over the, the course of Sex, Death and the Infinite Void, where he had um, been very unwell and been admitted to the Priory and wasn't around for the, the end portion of that record. Mm -hmm. And this time around, it was the first full length he'd come back to since um, all of that had gone down. Mm -hmm. So I kind of felt like we were breathing, breathing kind of new life into into Creeper, into into a, um, into a vessel. Kind of felt like, um, yeah, like we we cheated death a little bit. And so mm -hmm. the the metaphor, a lot of the stuff that we talk about on the records in terms of them being concepts and things, they're all kind of reference points to what's going on yeah. in our real lives as well. Mm -hmm. So um, so this this time around, it, it felt very apt to to, to go that way. Um, it felt like it was what's going happening in real life too. Yeah, um, it's been a really, uh, really cool experience so far to to be um, able to use that as a storytelling device to kind of reference what's going on yeah. in our real lives also. Yeah, so you must be really proud of it. I mean, it's the third Creeper album. I mean, I know there was the EP in there as well, American Noir. And like for you, when you obviously talk so like, you know, honestly about the fact that these things reflect your real lives, you know, thinking back now on that whole process of making this record, like how proud of it are you? Like what's one of the standout things about making this one for you? Well, you know, I think it's been my favorite era of Creeper ever so far. Some of my favorite shows have happened uh, while we've been in Sangre. Or, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's been cool to see, like, to build a set list that's so eclectic from us all over the years, um, and to be playing like all sorts of songs now. It's it's like um, it's it's like you know we entered a cheat code on our band, and now you have all this material to pull from. So it's really really fun. Mm -hmm. So so proud of the record, it's, um, and how well it was received, and uh, how, how how people really believed in it, you yeah. know. Um, and so that was really really special for us. But uh, 
but more than that, like it's, I'm, I'm very proud of Ian um, and Ian's, uh, like, like you can hear Ian's influence all throughout the record. <laughs> and our friendship is, uh, you know, it's been, uh, been, it's been amazing. It's been so strong uh, through all of this. Yeah. So I'm proud of my friends. I'm so proud of the band we are today. Um, <laughs> and I think we're the best version we've ever been. I think this is the, we're entering our prime now, which is uh, incredible after yeah. this long doing it. So, um, so yeah, absolutely elated. Yeah, I mean, I'm really, like, for me, this album is so special. And I feel like I can see it on other Creeper fans, like, faces, you know, like, when you see all the reaction to it and stuff. And I just, they've been so obsessed ever since you said that you were putting this album out. Like, what about Black Heaven? Before you even dropped Black Heaven, they were like, give us Black Heaven. They never even heard this song. Like, how is that for you, really? Like, knowing how dedicated these people are, you know? And, and like, you've created, like, I would say, like, ERA creates this space for your fans where everyone can feel included and a part of something. Is that is that the motto and the message that Creeper have had from the beginning, really, to create this space for people to feel accepted and feel like they're friends, you know? Oh, most certainly. I think um, I think growing up, I, like, I, I was such a massive Rocky Horror Picture Show fan, mm-hmm. and I always felt, I even went to see it so many times when I was younger, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm, I'm still so, such a big, big, important part of who I am. And I always loved about the fandom for Rocky. Um, mm-hmm was that it felt like a very inclusive space, felt, yeah. felt like a place that you could, even though there was a silly camp theatricality to yeah. it and a dressing up element, um, I always felt very much around my people when mm-hmm. I was there. And it was a, it was a place for me and uh, that to, to go and really just be myself and let loose. And, and this always been very special to me. And we've always tried to craft that with Creeper as well, where it's um, some of these ideas are really silly and bombastic mm-hmm. and over the top and it's mm-hmm. kitschy and it's, you know, it's um, Amdram and yeah. uh, it's all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, but at the heart of it, like the idea is to create a space that you can go and just be who you are, and and, and it, it, you like this silly band, mm-hmm. but everyone around you is there for the same reasons. But also, it's more than just music; it's more than just the people in the band. Mm-hmm. Um, coming up through punk rock, we were always taught and always grew up worshiping bands that the band and the crowd are the same thing. That no yeah. anyone can get on the stage and perform. That's why punk is great, yeah. and, and I think it means the the spirit of being DIY and anyone can do it, get up and regardless of your equipment or your musical ability. Um, and I think that's the spirit that Creeper still has, mm-hmm. even though we probably don't represent, we're not as much of a DIY band these days, it's, it's got to a size, size of a size now, but... Uh, yeah, you but can't help it, it needs, it, needs yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, we, we still do a lot of it, like, like you know, my girlfriend Charlotte yeah. does all our makeup, um, yeah. we have Hayden, who's been our lighting guy forever, designing these shows, um, we have yeah. Darcy around, and so of us all... We have a creative community of people that all work mm-hmm. on Creeper. Mm-hmm. And I think it's reflected in the fact that a lot of the fans kind of uh, are involved in that too. Yeah. You can see them, there would be no show about them. And I think um, if you, even if you took away the, the, the individuals, the community is what the band is. And, mm-hmm. and it's a safe place for people to go and be themselves and disappear into fantasy and forget about the bullshit of their everyday lives. Yeah. That's the, uh, yes, that's the message, the, the yeah. ethos we try to approach it with. Yeah, I mean, that's what music is so special for, isn't it? You know, because people can really lose themselves and, like you say, feel a part of something, but it's honestly so special, Sanguivore, and I want to say congratulations to you on that album release because I'm really, really happy for you and I love it. And at the moment, I can't pick which my favourite song is because it changes <laughs> week to week, seriously. Um, but I know, like, when me and you last chatted, it was Dal- Download Pilot 2021. Yeah, I know. That was time ago now, wasn't it? I know, crazy. And I remember we were talking about Jim Steinman and yes. your love of Jim Steinman even back then and about the musical. And I know that you said that at the time, I mean, American Noir wasn't even out yet. That's crazy. That <laughs> like time, so ago, I know. Wow. time flies. But we were talking about that and you were saying that even then, like American Noir, American Noir was a bit of a apocalyptic romance of epic proportion. And I said to you, obviously, very Jim Steinman. And I know that this album is a bit of an ode to that love of Jim Steinman for you. So I just wondered, you know, since that he's come from like a bit of a musical world, and obviously there's things like, I don't know if you've seen it, like Dracula musical from yes. Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Yes, of course, yeah. Oh my gosh. It's um, I thought, oh, I'm it. <laughs> oh, nice, I love that. <laughs> right, well, I wondered if, well, this might be a yes question for Will then, but do you think that you would ever put yourself forward for a bit of a spooky vampire musical? If you could do that, would you do that? I think, you know, the thing that we have talked, spoken about before, uh, management, as I, I'd always love to uh, have done uh, Eddie uh, at Rocky Horror. I've always felt that's a role that's really natural for my voice and mm-hmm. a, a, a great placing for me. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'd do good at doing a main main role in, like, in, a, in a musical, just because have you, those people are impeccable singers. And, uh, and I'm a rock and roll singer, you know, mm-hmm. so um, uh, it's a slightly different style. Yeah. I love going 
I'm watching musicals though that's one of my favourite things in the world but I, it's one of my dreams to play Eddie one day um, I always dress up as Eddie wherever time we go to, to Rocky Horror um, I mean he's the coolest like, yeah it's me you know um, but I'm like I, I can sing Hopper 2 pretty good so, yeah. um, so I would love to do that one oh what about you could like maybe crack that out for a bit of a, an encore with the next crew for oh, sure maybe I, I, I would love to you know actually there's a great um, uh, one of the one of the big touch points for um, Sangreville was Tans the Vampire the um, Jim Steinman musical mm-hmm. um, that was the vampire yeah. related musical yeah um, it's an incredibly, uh, incredibly Steinman in, in the sense that he uses lots of motifs from his other songs and kind yeah. of all fused together. Um, and it's I've never got to see it because it's um, it's, it's not it's mainland Europe where they where they, they, they show it. But uh, we watched loads of videos online. I've been obsessed with it for years. Yeah. So hoping that comes over soon. I'd love to come see that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that'd be great. I mean, I'm big up on the musicals because they are the best. And I know like some people like in rock music might not think musicals are cool, but they're cool, right? I love musicals. Well, I think I, I think the thing is I think uh, you know people didn't think Meat Life was cool when it came, mm. when it first came out, but like I think. The world's looking back on that era of music and stuff as well, and more theatrical stuff, and with different eyes now. You know, yeah. um, things don't have to be heavy to be seen as uh, to, to have a, their place in rock music. You know, mm-hmm. things can be dramatic and theatrical and over the top, and yeah. um, and I think that's kind of the space that Creeper occupies as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. We kind of represent a, a kind of a bygone time in, in, in a sense, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm so excited to see the show tonight. I've seen you guys perform live so many times, but obviously not seen Sangle Bot Euro Creepy yeah. yet. Um, so, yeah, I can't wait. And obviously, the stage show is a big part of what you guys are doing now. And I'm just curious, just like last couple of questions like, when you look back at previous Creeper tours, each time now, it's, does it feel to you like it's getting grander and bigger and more bizarre in the best way? Like, does it feel like you're bringing more vans and more suitcases with you every time? Oh yeah, I mean, there's more people with the networks than ever now. Yeah. Um, but it, but it, it, what's great about it is, um, I always compare it to um, to Ed Wood or something, you know, the, the, the B movie director um, mm-hmm. who rounded up and corralled a bunch of people to, to, to make these, these incredible B movies. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he had the Vampire and, uh, uh, and, and a, a wrestler and you know Bella Lugosi and yeah. uh, lots of other people and we're like a hodgepodge of people from all different backgrounds and different places all making the same thing mm. so each time around a lot of it is the same people <laughs> Charlotte who does our makeup and is not my partner mm. wasn't my partner when we first first started working with Creeper yeah. she was an actress working with us and nice. she was on she came on stage on tour with us and, uh, yeah. and performed on, on in a the theatre of fear in 2017 yeah. and she still works for Creeper mm-hmm. um, to this day, and has been with us for years. <laughs> um, uh, Beth, who was, uh, you know, I don't want to hate to, to break the um, the illusion, but plays Darcy, has yeah. been working with Creeper a long time as well. It's a Salem. It's a, like, it's a big. Right. Uh, there's a lot of people who uh, the same sort of influences, same sort of exciting things, playing different roles and making different films, and yeah. um, that's always the way I see it. Like each one is a chat zone, and a, and a completely maybe it's the same people, but it's um, we're making a completely different thing each time around. Yeah. And, and it's like American Horror Story in the sense of like we've got the same actors but we just, <laughs> we're all diff- different things and yeah. I think we've all hit a bit of our stride with Sang mm-hmm. where it's like all of us screw up goth kids you know <laughs> and, and that's part of one of the things we have in common you know yeah. like yeah. Uh, and, and, and rock kids and, and metal kids mm-hmm. uh, and emo kids and yeah. um and I think now it was oh we could do this this, this creepy record it was easy you know it was just it was so easy to do this vampire record it was yeah. so much fun because yeah. it was so in in our blood mm. yeah. <laughs> um, that's so to speak and yeah. um, so it's been easy for us it's been really really fun so yeah oh, it's, it's it's amazing it's much bigger and grander but it's lots of the same um, components weirdly it's yeah. familiar yeah. yeah well that's good I mean like you say same team of people around you it's only going to feel like natural and it must be feeling like good to just keep coming back all the time like more audiences more fans and everything like that but I want to say well I think that you might have the best answer for this one but if you were to put out an autobiography about yourself obviously what would you call it what what would be your title jeez oh, um, <laughs> <sighs> um, we're back on the spot like throwback 2021 download pilot <laughs> um, uh, there was a um, there's a book that I have at home um, about Ed Wood that's called In Agony and Ecstasy mm-hmm. uh, and I always think that's a really cool name for uh, for, for, for an autobiography nice. um, mine um, there's a quote from Jonathan Creek the magician in Jonathan Creek um, mm-hmm. it's a, a sex and sorcery magic and mystery and I have it as my answer phone message uh, so, so when people phone me it goes sex and sorcery magic and mystery 
William von Gould. Uh, and it's just to make my friends laugh. But I always forget when journalists sometimes phone me and I've missed the call, but they get that message. Um, so I'd probably call it Sex and Sorcery, Magic and Mystery, William von Gould. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, I think we can sign off. William von Gould, everyone. Thank you thank so you much, having, Will. Thank you for having me again. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you for chatting and good luck tonight. I can't wait to see the show. Thank and you. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for being back on the show. And it's no, a pleasure. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs>